Hey, hey, Justin Chamnus here, and welcome back to the Real Estate Wholesalers Club This is not a. This is not actually about outsourcing your business. Um, <laughs> I left that up there from another video I was working on. I'm working on that outsourcing your business course, and so it's down there at the bottom. Hey, it's down down here at the bottom. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about how to evaluate a property deal today. And we're going to jump right into doing that. Um, you guys let me know what your questions are and comments. We're going to jump into evaluating property deals for repair costs. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I'm back. This is Justin Chamness, and we're talking about how to repair, how to get repair costs on a on a fix and flipper deal, a junker deal, a, a, a landlord deal, a ugly house deal. How's everybody doing this week? I hope you're doing pretty good this week. We are in the middle of massive development and growth right here in the Real Estate Wholesalers Club. We are putting together some advanced level trainings that are just going to absolutely change you guys' mindsets and lives. Your businesses are going to be the better for it. And so I'm looking forward to having all that done. But man, I've been staying up super duper late and working, uh, burning the candle at both ends because I just, that's just how I am, man. I love to, when I get something in my mind that I want to do and I just want to get it done, I want to work and work and work and work. I don't want to quit and I, and I hate distractions. And uh, that's just, <laughs> man, you might even, if you knew me real well and you, you lived in the same house as I do, you might even say that dude gets so damn manic, he's cranky. He's grumpy, and maybe I am a little bit, a little bit cranky and grumpy when I feel like I'm being distracted from what I'm focused on, man. Like I want to be that, you know. There's two different kinds of people out there. There's, there's the candles, and those people are the ones that you can light them up, and they'll, they'll light up a good section of this entire room, and we'll be able to see some things. And then there's, the the lasers okay and the lasers are <laughs> much more it's the same light it's the same exact light it's just more focused see now you're not gonna light up a room with a laser but you can you can perform surgery with it right you can you can burn a hey, you can burn through things with a laser <laughs> I'm not a laser expert but if I'm comparing myself to a candle or a laser I think I would rather be a laser. How about you? Anyway, welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm having difficulties again with Facebook not letting me do a, a Facebook live broadcast right here on the group. I keep getting this stupid broadcast error message. It's absolutely heinous. Um, it does say a couple people are watching here and I've had to share so what I ended up doing is I ended up starting this live broadcast on the Facebook page and then sharing it to the group which is stupid but you know as soon as I announced the four weeks to your first deal accountability teams it's like Facebook took a big dump on my abilities to do live broadcast the right way and so now I'm just trying to figure out any old way I can get a live broadcast put together and get it out here on Facebook, you know, where I can share the screen and show you guys what's up. All right, enough bull. Let's talk about how to evaluate a property deal for repair costs or rehab costs. This was a question that came in the other day on the Facebook group right there on the wall. And, you know, it's a question we get pretty often. And it's a great question. It's a good question and really what I want to start out with talking about repair costs and and estimates for getting you know the rehab work done on on a property deal and and this is important to know because of course it's it's important for you to be able to calculate your maximum uh, maximum allowable offer but it's also important because your buyers are going to want to know they're going to say hey what do you think the repair costs on that are um, and you're going to have to have some kind of a ballpark idea now I did say ballpark idea. I, I didn't say dead on balls accurate, did down to the very penny, uh, because nobody knows that. You don't know that. The owner of the home currently doesn't know that. Um, there's no contractor in the universe that knows down to the penny what that's going to cost. 
And so really we're just looking for a good ballpark estimate. Okay, we're trying to get as close to it as we possibly can without, you know, uh, racking our brains too hard and driving everybody crazy, uh, climbing all over every detail of that property to try to ascertain every tiny little thing of what it would need to be done to be repaired and what it would cost. It's just not necessary. And uh, I, I also do fix and flip properties. And I can tell you, I have a contractor that comes in. And he'll walk around a place and he'll take a few notes and he'll take a few measurements and he'll uh, he'll put together basically what it's going to cost to do a repair. And this is when I'm actually doing a fix and flip and I, and I use a contractor. And basically, you know, he's doing the same type process that I am. And I want to show you what that process is so that now you can do it and you can evaluate properties for repair costs and what the rehab bill would be, whether you're wholesaling that or whether you're going to keep it as a fix and flip yourself. Um, you're going to need to know what the estimates are. If you're wholesaling the property off, you're definitely going to know, you know, want a, want a ballpark figure of what the estimates of repair are uh, because you're going to want to share that with your buyers because that's important for not only your maximum allowable offer, but it's also important for their maximum allowable offer to you. So it is important. You guys get that. I don't need to beat that to death. And I got a real simple system here that I use as far as getting. Uh, into the ballpark you know so to speak and that's the thing it doesn't need to be exact you know it really doesn't it doesn't need to be exact at all if it if it needed to be exact none of us could really do it we'd all have to go to contractor school but it doesn't need to be exact and and another reason why it doesn't need to be exact is because you know everybody's gonna all your buyers if you showed that property to five different buyers and all five of them put together an estimate of what they thought the repair cost would be and then they shared that all five of them shared their results with you you would have five different numbers and it, they would all be somewhere let me just I'll pull a number out of my hat here uh, you know 25,000 and then the next guy's 27 5 and the next guy's 30 and then the, the next guy is 24 5 and then the next guy's 28 7 okay so you know it's all kind of like it's just kind of a moving target. Some buyers are going to put more expensive cabinets in than others. You know, some buyers are going to want to put vinyl siding on the outside instead of just painting the, the original siding and repairing it. You know, some buyers are going to want to put all new shingles on the roof because it looks like it's going to need new shingles in two or three years. And some are just going to want to, you know, paint it basically, not paint it, but they clean those. So, you know, there's lots of different variations in how your buyers are going to view these properties and what they're going to do to them. So, you know, the rehab cost or repair cost is always going to be slightly different between each and every buyer. So you can't, as a wholesaler, expect yourself to be so accurate on repair bills because you'll never be accurate no matter what. If you came back with a repair estimate of $30,000 to repair this house and you showed it to five buyers, every one of them, probably has a different number other than that 30,000 and one's going to be 32, one's going to be 28, one's going to be 27, one's going to be 35, you know, it, it's, it, it, you just get close, just get close, just get close, so don't sweat it, that's my point, don't sweat it, it's not that big of a deal, baby, you just got to let it go a little bit, relax, just get in the ballpark, these buyers are going to do their own due diligence anyways, right? Right. Okay, so you're going to just get in the ballpark. And in fact, if you have a great relationship with buyers, uh, you've done the work of building a buyer's list and you've met a few buyers over the phone and you've talked, you have good rapport, there is nothing in the world wrong with calling those buyers and saying, hey, here's the situation on this house. Here's the information I've gathered from the, the property about, you know, what needs to be done. Can you help me kind of throw together a ballpark? You know, I mean, nothing wrong with that. You'll probably write that contract up if it's a deal right then and there with that buyer. So, you know, don't sweat this aspect of real estate wholesaling. You don't need to be a contractor. You don't need to be a, a fix and flip professional in order to know you don't have to be even accurate. You just have to be close. Somewhere in the ballpark. It's like horseshoes, right? Close 
only counts in horseshoes and rehab estimates. I, I, I don't know. What's the phrase? <laughs> anyway, let me show you my system real quick of how I go through a property deal. Now, this is whether I'm there in person or whether I'm doing this as a virtual deal that I've never going, I'm never going to go see. I'm going to screen share with you for a minute and I'm going to show you two forms that are in the free training which by the way is at www.realestatewholesalersclub.com and if you uh, sign up there uh, you can get access to all the free training modules with the agreements this stuff that I'm showing you right here uh, all of it's there take it change it make it yours put your logo on it put your name on it your business name on it your phone number on it please and get to using it but all of this stuff is available for you for free because you're a part of this group and i love you okay it's really it's really okay um there are some good people out here in the world that still try to do good things for people sometimes and uh you know while we all need to make a living um some of us aren't necessarily all about just getting that money okay uh, there are some good things in, in life that come to you at no cost. They cost somebody something somewhere, but this one here, it's not going to cost you anything. The first sheet I'm looking at here, you can find it in the free training over at realestatewholesalersclub.com. And what it is is property analysis form. Property analysis form. Does anybody out there uh, have the ability to uh, to chat with me? Is it possible for you to chat with me on this live broadcast? I'm just trying to see if Facebook is cutting us out of doing, uh, you know, having the communication here, uh, which I, I think would completely be horrible. Um, that's kind of the whole point. And I'm disappointed with Facebook lately, aren't you? I mean, it's sad. It was it was so good and it worked so well for so long. And then now it's just like it's just a freaking battle just to get them to do the same shit that they've always done. And then, you know, you're seeing on the news all the time about them getting all your passwords and stuff ripped off and sold to Russians or something. I don't know. Anyway, I can't keep up with where all my passwords have been sold. You know, I'm just looking for a slice of that check. All right. Property analysis form. This is exactly what this is. Just a property analysis form. Before we get into analyzing any property here in my office, in this team that I run, we do a property analysis form. You can see it has the property address. You can see it has the property source. That means it might have been a JV partner. It might have been Craigslist. It might have been Zillow. It might have been uh, mail marketing. It might have been a bandit sign. It has the number of beds, baths, square feet, and the year that it was built. Whether it's vacant or it's occupied. What the Trulia.com crime map shows all right there's a big hint if you're like truly a crime what's that trulia.com go down there click on the maps slide on over to the crime map and check it out and see if that address is in the middle of the crime zones okay if it is you're gonna have to, gonna have to get it cheaper right now these are all things you want to know on how to analyze a property deal all right ARV after repair value you could base this I have a team member that bases theirs off of the Zestimate okay now this is not how we we fully do it and I've got other videos on how to come up with accurate after repair values but the Zestimate that's a good place for us to start okay um, investor profit what do we think the returns would be if we were able to get this as a good deal all in for our buyers at 70% of the after repair value? Minus repairs. See that? Minus repairs. And then, see the repairs? Minus the selling price. Okay. Minus the wholesale fee. Equals our offer. Our maximum allowable offer. Okay. Okay. So now, this is how we track in office what we're doing for each property deal. And we have this form filled out for each property deal that we're working on or considering working on. Okay, Because this allows us in the office to get a snapshot. 
in a glance of what is going on with this property address. All right, motivation. Is there a motivated seller or what's the motivation? Is this probably a good fix and flip property or is this a good landlord property? Repairs, okay? Now, you're going to fill in all of this information to the best of your knowledge. And once you have all this information filled out, you can run all your calculations, make all your offers, you can talk to your buyers intelligently, you can do all these things. Owner contact information, follow-up dates. See, we, we've pretty much thought of everything here on this property analysis form. Now, that's just a property analysis form. That's kind of getting your team going on a property and getting all the information together about a property that you need in order to evaluate it and make it work or make your offer. <clears throat> the second page I want to show you is the rehab cost evaluator form. <laughs> and it is exactly just that. The rehab costs evaluator form. Right under that, the title you can see, take this, it's in the free training, make it yours, make it your own. You can see the rehab cost evaluator form. Underneath that title, I have the phrase, the big five, in quotation marks. Not air quotes, but real quotes, okay? <laughs> the big five. The big five. What are the big five? Now, this is talking specifically about coming up with that repair costs number. What are the big five? The big five I have highlighted here. They are the five major systems of a property. All right. Now, you know how you have a nervous system and a respiratory system and a cardiovascular system and a digestive system and you have a reproductive system. You have all these various systems that make up your body, right? Okay, well, the same thing goes with a house. It only has five systems, really. The roof. <laughs> if the roof is no good, and and we're talking about an average size house here, okay? A three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage, or smaller, right? Um, a thousand square feet on average, okay? Now, in other words, I'm saying this because the numbers I'm sharing with you if you go and you look at a property that's 3,000 square feet, then you might need to double or triple this number. Okay, but, but let's just take an average property of 1,000 square feet. Okay, let's just say it's 1,000 square feet. We're going to go look through the big five. You might say, well, I'm not in town. I can't do it. This is a virtual co-wholesale deal. Cool, then have a conversation with the homeowner in the process that you're working of getting that deal and ask them about the big five. Don't say, hey, tell me about the big five. They don't know what the hell the big five is. All you got to do is say, hey, how old's that roof? Number one, the roof, right? If he says, ah, the roof's real shot. I'm probably going to need a new roof. 5K. Okay. It might be more than that. It might be less than that but you're gonna say 5K, right? The next one, HVAC, that's heating and air, okay? Usually consists of a furnace in the basement or crawl space or someplace, there'll be a furnace. The furnace, a lot of times, has what's called an A-coil on top of it. The A-coil is actually part of the air conditioner system, right? And then it'll have a air conditioner condenser on the outside of the property someplace around on the side of the house it's that it's that air conditioner box that you know when it kicks on it blows all that hot air up in your face that big old air conditioner thing in my bobber that's called an air conditioner condenser <laughs> now all of those things together that entire system is considered the HVAC system heating ventilation air conditioning that's what HVAC means <clears throat> If you ask the homeowner or you go in person and you see that the HVAC system is old and rusty and or missing and it's just a piece of old looking crap or if you notice that the vents, you know, the, 
the duct work. You know what a duct work looks like? It's like usually a metal looking box that runs under the floor and it comes up where your vents are so the air can come through. Well, sometimes instead of metal, they have asbestos round tubes that are white and flaking off and nasty. And anytime you see deficiencies or you hear them describe deficiencies, 5K. It might not take 5K. It might take more than 5K. But you're getting in the ballpark. New HVAC, 5K. All right. So if it needed a new roof, remember that's 5K. If it needed a new HVAC, remember that's 5K. If it didn't, it didn't. Now, the third one, the basement. The basement. You can see the basement. It says, are there cracks in the walls? And I'm not talking about where it was built. I'm talking about big cracks. Just nasty cracks where things aren't smooth and nice in one piece anymore. Are there cracks in the walls? Are the walls bulging in or bulging out or are they nice straight walls with no cracks? If they're nice straight walls with no cracks, good. If there's cracks, if it's bulging, moving in, moving out, 5K. It might be more than 5K. It might be less. Don't know. I'm getting in the ballpark. 5K. If the walls are nice and straight and there's no cracks, it's not bulging. <clears throat> if the floors in the house are super unlevel, that's because something's not right with that foundation. What's holding it up? So... You know, that's another indication that there's something wrong with the basement. So if the walls are nice and straight and clean and not cracked looking, and yet the floors are all like this, 5K. Why? Because I'm not sure what the hell's going on with this. There's something going on. I mean, a little bit of slope in the floor, not big of a deal. But you know what I'm talking about. You've been in a house where you get up and you go from this side of the room to that side of the room, and by the time you get to that side of the room, you're half running. Because you're going downhill, uh, like that, you know. That's what I'm talking about. That shit, 5K. It might be more. It might be less. 5K. That's what I'm, I'm going to estimate. The next one, the next major system in the house is electrical. Electrical. Panel box. Breaker box. Fuse box? What's it look like? Do you know what a breaker box looks like? Okay, you need to ask the seller if you're not there and you can't go look at it. You need to ask the seller, listen, do you know, if is your electrical a fuse box or is it a breaker box? If it's a fuse box, 5K, 5K. If it's a breaker box, maybe not 5K. If they say breaker box, then you're going to want to say, is it 40 amp or... 200 amp or well if it's 40 amp 5k <laughs> right if it, if they say 100 amp it might be might be okay 200 amp might be okay so I might not put anything down there for that now if they don't know if it's 40 amp or if it's 100 amp or 200 amp or what they don't know anything I ask him this question. Do you know whether or not you have a main breaker? Like if you switch one breaker off in that box, it turns off the whole house. If they say, or, and then you might say, or do you have just a bunch of little individual ones, but no main one that controls all of them. If it's a, if they have a main breaker, that'll kick off all the other breakers, they're probably talking about 100 amp, maybe maybe 200 amp, you know. They're talking about something bigger probably than the, the 40 amp, 50, 60 amp stuff. It's, you know, 5K, okay. If they say, nah, we just got the individual breakers, blah, blah, we don't know what amps and all that, then 5K. If I don't know, 5K, right? 
because I don't want to say the electrical's great over there. Yeah, the seller said it works great. They powered on the lights in their bathroom this morning with it themselves. You know, that shit don't mean nothing. Okay, if you don't know 5K. The next one is plumbing. You might ask the homeowner, hey, do you guys have uh, plastic, you know, those plastic tubes in there that, that are the plumbing? Or do you have the the metal or, or or do you know if they say galvanized they say lead they say black iron whatever you know you might as well just say 5k <laughs> because you don't really know and they might not really know either okay so you're gonna pad it a little bit and you're gonna you're gonna say 5k for the plumbing that's how I do it why? Because you might end up having to have a guy, your buyer might end up having to have a guy come in and gut that entire plumbing job out of that house and put in all new plastic stuff, PVC stuff. Yeah. So, and CPVC, <laughs> that's for the hot stuff. Hot stuff, I guess. I think that's right. Um, if they said black iron, you know, that's probably just like the sewer pipe they're looking at going in the ground. That doesn't tell you what the pipes are that the water is flowing into the house, you know, through. So, you just try to ask a few questions and get an idea. And if you don't know, then 5K. And if you do know it's good, if they said, oh yeah, we had the plumbing changed out last year. Or two years ago, or five years ago, and it's all that new updated stuff. Cool. No big deal. Nothing. Okay. Cosmetics. Cosmetics. If it's if it's just cosmetics around the house that we're talking about, the drywall sucks. The hardwood floors need to be refinished. The bathroom is ugly. It ain't been updated since the 70s. The the bedrooms, the doors, and the doorknobs look like that ancient shit from back in the day when they were like, you know, crystal crystal doorknobs and they jostle back and forth through the door and it just rattle, 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 rattle. You know what? All that shit. How do you, you're like, well, that's doors and doorknobs and light switches and then there, we got to get new lights and we got to finish the floor. We got to do the drywall. Then this kitchen looks like crap and then the bathrooms again. Now there's this other bathroom over here and are we going to do carpet or are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? You could go crazy and your head explodes. It's real simple. If it needs a pretty much overhaul on the cosmetics, if it needs an overhaul on the cosmetics, you can figure about $25 a square foot. Okay? So, if it's a thousand square feet, you can figure it's going to cost about $25,000 just for the cosmetics. That's a new kitchen, new bathroom, hardwood floors, drywall repaired, ceilings repaired, everything painted, the outside repaired and painted. Everything looking good. They planted some bushes in the front yard. <coughs> About $25 a square foot. All right? So, in this particular case, if we had $25 a square foot we had to put into it, and it's 1,000 square feet, we're talking about $25,000. Then we're going to go back and we're going to add 5000 for plumbing. That puts us at 30. We're going to add 5000 for electrical. That puts us at 35. We're going to add 5000 for the basement. You know, let's assume it, that all these things need to be done. If they don't, then you don't add the 5000. The basement, that's what what, what do you got? 35. HVAC 40. Roof 45. This is a $45,000 repair job. And your buyers are going to come in and they're going to say, well, you know, I might be able to cut that down a little bit and I might be able to get it down to about 40. And then you'll have another buyer who will say, well, that damn property there, that's a $60,000 job. Yeah, next, 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 next. Get, 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 get the hell out of here. I, I, I don't want to be beat up. I, I'm trying to offer you, you know, what it could be done for and tell you what it could be done for. I'm not trying to nail it down and, and argue on, on contractor estimates and shit like this. Hey, maybe you need to get a cheaper contractor. Okay, maybe this guy over here, maybe he's got one that's cheaper. 
I, I don't know. I'm just throwing out ballpark figures. I'm not here to argue the figures, okay? I'm just here to present an estimate. It's an estimate. It's not a guarantee, okay? This is a $45,000 project, and it needs all five major systems redone, and it needs all the cosmetics done, about 45000 But that's how I figured it all up to get to the 45000 Now, of course, again, if the property is bigger than 1,000 square feet, you know, it might be a more than 5000 on each of the big five. And it might be more, you know, than the 25000 um, It might be, instead of, you know, if it's 2,000 square feet, that's going to be 50000 just in cosmetics. But we're talking about, you know, a lot of money, okay? And you're going to be able to buy it cheaper also because it's going to have to have more money put into it. Now, as, as the scale goes up, you slide up like that, and you're, you're getting 2,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet. Sometimes it's not quite double or triple what we just discussed. Uh, you can do it cheaper than that because you're doing it in more bulk, so to speak, or the rehabber is, you know, the, the contractor guy, I mean, or your buyer. So, you know, uh, there is a bit of a sliding scale. Things seem to get a little bit cheaper as they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but not cheaply enough. It's just still kind of high priced. And, uh, you know, you might be thinking in your head, you know, uh, some of you, hey, I remember when you could buy a whole house for $45,000 and it was like fucking new. Yeah, yeah, totally. But now that's what it costs to fix one. So, you know, um, if I'm also not at the property or not able to visit the property, I'm going to ask the seller, uh, the homeowner, or whoever my point of contact is over there to provide me with the following pictures here. Okay, here's a pictures checklist. I'm going to have them follow uh, follow up with me with these pictures. And, and I'm going to need these pictures because I'm going to need them to sell this property deal to my buyers. But also, it's going to help me confirm what I think I know about the big five right all right that's uh that's pretty much it that's that's a wrap on how to come up with repair costs repair estimates and um, you know that kind of thing I hope that's helpful and uh, I hope I can get to the bottom of this Facebook issue like what's going on with this Facebook stuff it's just not man it's eating me up that I can't do what I need to do with it and I was like a month or two ago man we were jamming with this Facebook live and it's just like Facebook live just took a poo and it's horrible um, if anybody's out there is smarter than me on this stuff and knows why I'm getting this broadcast error message from Facebook it's just it's heinous it's heinous <laughs> it's heinous <laughs> who uses that word man only me it's heinous hey love you guys I think there's people watching. It says there's people watching, but man, normally we've got the chat rolling and it's a lot of fun to talk. I hope I uh, answered some questions for you. Um, I hope that was helpful in some way or another. And we will uh, chat with you next week. We'll talk with you next week. Don't forget, it is the 24th of April today. And in the first week of May, we are totally going to launch the four weeks to your first deal accountability teams boom i said it four weeks to your first deal accountability teams sessions you better check the events tab in his facebook group for the exact dates and times for the team of your choice somebody was asking me yesterday how do we get selected for the teams and it's like i felt like <laughs> i felt like i was in in grade school again and we were all lined up at the fence and they were picking out people who were going to play kickball uh, I want you on my team and then the other team captain gets the pick and it's like I'll take him yes I'm going to take that guy right over there and that guy there you can have him he sucks nah you don't want any of that you don't want to do that um, check the dates and times check the events tab Get signed up for the evolution of your choice, the team you want to be on. It's open to everybody, all right? 
There's no special qualifications you got to have. There's nothing you got to do. You don't need to sign up anywhere. You don't need to do nothing other than show up at the right time, at the right place, and that information is in the events tab of our free Facebook group. All righty. You know, guys, I'm excited. I really, really am. I'm having a great, great time. I am. This four weeks to your first deal shit here is absolutely the way of the future. Hey, thanks for watching. But don't forget to post, introduce yourself, tag a friend, like us, leave a comment, subscribe, share this video, just do something. Don't just sit there. There's all that money out there. You got to get going, get in motion. This is motion real estate.